already here. Before I do, uh, it's nice to see all your faces. Thanks for joining us. It's always a happy and good time when we see our community. So for those of you who may not know me, my name is Dr. Maguire Fernandez. I work for Ann Arbor Spark. And I mean, basically, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, herding cats, working, yeah, anyway, tech, lots of cool things that I do. But if you ever want to talk to me, I'm always an open door. Come and say hi, holler, introduce yourself, and I'll help however I can. As well as my other peeps who are also joining me and taking on the new team leadership role with Michael Spath, and there's Jonah back there from Atomic Object, so there may be. Um, so thank you for filling out the QR code. We really appreciate that. Um, at the end of the QR code, there was some two questions. So we want to learn a little bit more about our community. We want to learn if maybe Tuesdays or other days might be better for you to come and attend. Um, so we'll ask a few questions throughout our time to learn a little bit more about how we can help you get here. But, but also, the second question was today, what else do you want to see? What else do you want to hear? Who else do you want to learn from? Uh, whether you want to hear from some of the legends or hear from other pieces of the community about how they navigated their journey or how are other things going with the economy. We want to be able to support that. So any ideas you've got, we're here to listen and help make that come true as best as we can. Okay, so today's pitch, we'll go back to this pitch's presentations today. We'll have a few. We still have the five minutes and then afterwards we'll still have five minutes of questions. The one thing that we are kind of stepping away from is the virtual piece, so we won't be able to offer that, but we are still recording these, um, these, I want to say, videos, recordings will still be available. Matter of fact, uh, there is a magical entity, and his name is Roger, he's right here in the middle. <laughs> so, just a brief step into this. This kind of started before I started graduate school at U of M, so I'm original Austinite, uh, Austin, Texas. And before I started, A2 Geeks, you know, it's like trying to bring the community together. Hey, let's actually just share our stories and figure out how do we find new talent. Uh, I've got this problem, but, so it started with A2 Geeks, and then it kind of converged from there. And the person who kind of carried that torch was Doug Song and a couple of other team players. Uh, and Brian Kelly was part of it, and they were fencing at some point, and then it converged into A2 New Tech. And all of, since the beginning of those times have actually been recorded. So we're working with Roger to kind of, what can we find that's really cool? I kind of bring it back, and so we're hoping to kind of redo some things, some of that content, to bring back some of those speakers, the original MCs, to kind of hear about their journey. So things, cool things like that, you know. Anyway, moving forward. Today's is a little bit different. With definitely new leadership, um, you kind of have an audience kind of style as an auditorium, but if you still want food in the back or if you need a table, whatnot, please help yourself back there. So it's a little bit different. We're really hoping to get more people to come and join and grow so that way we can have much bigger spaces. Um, so invite your friends, invite who you think might be relevant or want to have a good time, or maybe they're looking for a job. You know, we're here for that as well. Okay, anything else that I'm missing? Uh, thank you, <laughs> Anna, for, for providing our beverages and our smiles for this evening. Oh, thank you. Um, anything else? Um, no, I think that's what you got. Okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our first presentation. Time catch. Nicholas. I say, I hope that's who's pitching. Yes. <laughs> oh, hi. I'm going to keep time. I'll be sitting right here, so um, I'll give you one of these, and you've got, um, you got a minute left, right? All right, let's welcome Nicholas. Come on. Yeah. Audience attention is not important. <laughs> Say it again, audience attention is not important. Ooh. It's everything. My name is Nick, founder and CEO of KindCatch. KindCatch is a content-driven conversational marketing platform helping brands use personalized video to connect and engage with their audience. Now I'll level with you that content-driven conversational marketing platform is a mouthful. 
So in the words of our customers, most end up saying, wow, you're like the Snapchat of text and email for me. We want to be the fastest, quickest, easiest way to collect and share a video to a targeted segment of an audience. It's as easy as, think of yourself as a fitness coach, a coach is a great 5 a.m. class. Right after the class, pull out the Kind Kids mobile app, film a quick video congratulating your members who attended, and shoot it out to them via text and email. They engage with that video on an automatically created landing page with the brand logo, the nice big video moments, and a customized call to action button to convert to book your next class, as an example. What previously took these brands 20 steps in 20 minutes can now be done in three steps in 30 seconds, leading to a dramatically higher level of engagement across their audience. So how do we get here and why would someone need Snapchat for text and email? Well, most brands today are looking at their customer journey from awareness to conversion to retention. And they're trying to figure out what levers to pull at different places to move someone along this funnel, right? At the end of the day, it is all about a battle for attention. And we're in a place where the average person, probably most of us, read just 100 words in written communication before we're on to the next email, right? The reason why we flip through those 200 emails so quickly. Short form video content is dominating attention, but for most brands, short form video content to them means posting generic content on social media, not knowing who's engaging and if it's converting, or taking 20 steps in 20 minutes to link it in text or email campaigns. This is great for driving awareness, but it is not moving the needle on conversion and retention. And that's where we come in, by providing a platform that allows brands to create highly personalized video content with a really low effort, deliver it to targeted segments of their audience, bringing them through that funnel, taking someone from a prospect to a first-time customer, from a first-time customer to a lifetime customer. We're really, really proud of the engagement metrics across the board of our current customer base. They are getting traction through their audience like they have never seen before. We're going toe-to-toe -to -toe against social media giants and driving more referral traffic and dollars and tremendous ROI. So who's your customer? It's a great question. Who's your customer and how do you find them are the most important questions? Because if you build it, they will not just come. For us, we have been able to grow our customer base using some warm relationships with brands like Official Driving School who use us for instructor and student engagement. We've really found success in the fitness space with our largest customer, Orange Theory Fitness, who uses us for coach to member engagement. And then also have a big background in the nonprofit space. So we're working with global nonprofits like Forgotten Children and their donor engagement. Today, we're at 110 customers on the path to $100,000 in annual recurring revenue. So where is our customer? For us, the TAM is really wide. There's a lot of use cases for where we fit, but we're focusing on a $500 million market opportunity, specifically in the verticals of fitness, health, and wellness, service-based membership, and nonprofits. Now, being a point solution in these markets, it's really important to make key strategic partnerships so we can leverage the force multipliers as a preferred video engagement solution for those partners. So we're making some of those partnerships today. It's a key part of our strategy. And as we continue to expand these partnerships, we're bringing on brands like, if some of you know, Ann Arbor-based Fran Worth and their portfolio concepts, L5 Capital Partners. They've got fitness, health, and wellness portfolio brands underneath their umbrella that we're driving traction down. Doing this same play in the service-based e-commerce side of things and on the nonprofit side. Why are we the right people to solve this problem? I've been able to build a team of individuals that have collectively built and exited some major global brands. Personally, I used to work for Orange Theory Fitness, built an e-commerce brand and a nonprofit, so I've lived the life of my customer. Right now we're raising a $500,000 convertible note round. We've got 420,000 closed or committed in the round and looking for the final 80,000. 70% of this round going into sales and marketing. We've got a functioning product in the market, gaining traction. 30% investing in the product to continue to stay really, really innovative. If you're interested in seeing what Kindness looks like in action, you can bump the QR code. You get a video from me three minutes after I get into the car tonight. Told your audience attention was not important. It was everything, and I hope I kept yours. Thank you. All right, questions. Yes, sir. Do I have to have your app to receive the videos, or do you push them into other social media? 
Great thing is that the audience does not have to download any app at any point in the process. All the content is delivered via text and email. It's a warm marketplace, so this is not a buy a list of 500 numbers and outbound text cold them. It is warm marketplace, you have a relationship with the brand, and you're getting these via text and email, no app download for you. What's your pricing structure? You flashed very quickly. It was like 70,000 ARR on 56 cust paying customers. Seems a little over. Price based on uh, the text and email value on a monthly basis. So to give you the uh, kind of width of those tiers, standard pricing, small business, 119 bucks a month, 2,500 texts, 10,000 emails. Grows up from there, 299, 399, and so on. And at each tier, they just get more texts in that monthly pricing tier, if that makes sense. So we've got a lot of those standard and pro customers right now, 119, 299 a month. Thinking about whether it's an enterprise play for us or can we just actually scale through those strategic partnerships and in the Orange Theory Fitness example, I sell a private equity for a middle of 55 Orange Theories and instantly you've got 55 back at that 119 to 299 a month each. Yes? If I'm an Orange Theory coach and, and I buy the mantra that like I, I need to send videos to my clients and, and that attention is everything, um, why not just Yeah, for most Orange Theories, if you think about engagement, and I used to work at Orange Theory, so I was asked as a coach to use my personal cell phone, take a video, and send it to a member individually. And that works if I'm trying to rebook Margarita to get her to come back into class. But now if I'm trying to do that for 10 individuals, I'm making 10 separate videos, sending 10 separate texts, or I'm putting Margarita in the dreaded group text with 10 members that she doesn't like or know, and now people are replying all those things, right? So there's certainly a path to collect and share video using MailChimp, individual texting, but it's clunky, and they just won't do it. We found that we insert ourselves at just the right point in time on the customer journey, i.e. when Margarita hasn't been in class in 10 days and she gets a video, we can rebook at 51% as an example, whereas before Orange Theory was rebooking at around 10 to 15% when Margarita hadn't come in in 10 days. Really shameful. <laughs> <laughs> Anecdotally, a lot of people, when they walk back into the studio, they say, man, thanks for sending that video. You reminded me of the feeling I get when I come to work out here. And obviously, fitness is just one example. I've used it a couple, but um, uh, there's multiple ways to get someone in, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. OK. So is it more of B2B only, or is there any uh, value for the individual users who want to subscribe to some of those uh, uh, influencer or I'm just trying to think is your strategy yeah. going to be B2B or B2C? Or We're what? mostly a B2B play, mm -hmm. but we have a small segment of our customer base that's like personal coaches or life coaches. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, more in the B2C type of realm, but still, it's a B2B play. We're going to sell to a B and then they're going to use it, you know, B2B to C. Yes? You guys have a pretty high percentage of uh, customers that are on promo. Uh, or free right now. Um, what is your conversion from that to full, to full customer? Yeah, it's high, and the reason we had a lot of promo is because for the first uh, two quarters of 2022, I went with the play of let's just get a ton of people to use it for free because I can raise dollars off of just free users and quickly saw that the market wants to see revenue. So switch to saying let's dial back the promo only for very specific cases and let's just start selling paying or you're off. Um, and now we've started to you know, pick up on the fundraising side and that customer, pay customer side is, is growing. Yeah. All right, thanks for asking that. Okay. You have a lot of back-end stuff kind of going on and you're collecting real data metrics of how long does it take someone to reactivate? It's like, oh yeah, are you doing anything like that? Or are you capturing it on something like that? Like how can you use it to your advantage? Yeah, often I'll get asked, is there like, protectability or defensibility in the product? And the answer comes in <coughs> into your question is that today, for sure, somebody could just build what we have, but what they couldn't build is the machine learning that's happening in the background right now and how the system's getting smarter and smarter as brands are sending out more content and learning which segments are watching, viewing, clicking. The system itself is getting smarter. And right now we're figuring out how can we purpose that into meaningful data back to the customer to take advantage of, of all the data that we're uh, seeing there.
All right. If I think I know who we're coming up with, I met this lady earlier this morning at Dozer Coffee. I got really excited actually meet her today at Dozer Coffee. <laughs> it was like, this meeting's been in the making since before that one I started. But Crystal Brown, great links by a lot of Give it up for her. Even faster pace, thanks to the pandemic type of vaccine. 
It's grown over a billion dollars and the numbers are continuing to grow. The market is fragmented and right now it is right for our industry. What am I looking for? So right now, I am in the middle of a raise for 1.25. I am $250,000 into that raise and looking for another million. That million will go straight into GNA working capital as well as some equipment and making sure that our patents stay secure and belonging to G, um, GLB. We're also gonna throw a little bit of marketing in there because who's gonna remember me? <laughs> Financially, we know where we're going. I won't bore you, what I'm gonna tell you is that we're gonna spend our money right to make sure that we are the premier supplier, not only in the Midwest, but nationally. How do I know I can do this? Well, I let my experts be the experts. Who can tell I'm not a scientist? <laughs> I don't have to be because I manage phenomenal scientists. Uh, now, along with my COO and my CFO, who come from the wonderful Michigan and Michigan State, I'm a person divided. Uh, we've got Ricky Zatar, who is from MIT, based out on the West Coast, spending a lot of time here in the lab. We've got Joe D'Angelo, who some of you I believe in this room may know. I've got Diane Bowie leading us, who I know knows quite a few people in this room. I've got uh, Don Gibson, who's visiting us here from DC. Basically, I've got the experience, I've got the expertise, I've got the personality. I gotta cut you off. Oh, am I <laughs>
Mark, like, what? The best conversation. Yes. And I met him via, yeah, wasn't my neighbor Lori, but she, well, you got connected here actually through Michael through the Michigan Founders event. That was great. Right after the event, or right after the big ice storm. Well, yeah, I got power right before I left to go to the event. In 2009, someone gifted me with an anonymous $16,000 to make my last year of school with the one request that I paid this gift for. My name is Mark Alexander, founder and CEO of Life Tuition, the only platform that allows students to raise money for tuition that's sent directly to the school about the burden of debt. Meet Lisa, a real life student. In 2018, her bankruptcy documents listed how much she had sent to Sally Mae in the spin off Navy over the years. After $135,000, she had paid roughly $100,000 in interest, paying the profits of Sally Mae. Her balance now set at just over $96,000. And the fact that she was going through breast cancer treatment wasn't sufficient enough to remove her debt. This is just one of the many situations and burdens that Life Tuition is looking to address. Our current educational system has 1.6 trillion in climate and outstanding debt, with 3.9 million students with loans with no degrees. Unlike other educational systems, ours is difficult to navigate with access to resources been limited to many. We provide an end-to-end -end solution where transactions are processed through our custom bill platform, stored with financial institutions prior to being dispersed to schools for tuition support. Like tuition allows students to create a free campaign that can be immediately shared with users around the world. Funds raised are immediately sent to their schools to help pay for their tuition assistance. And also, like tuition allows organizations of all sizes to now subscribe at a low monthly cost to have their own custom built fundraising software for them to use. At Light Tuition, we make signing in and signing up simple. Students can easily create their unique account, create their campaign, and launch all in the same day. Likewise, for supporters, they can navigate our platform to find an amazing student they want to support. And just as easy as it is to create a campaign, it is even easier to support one. Unlike our competition, we send funds raised directly to the school to ensure that contributor support reaches the tuitions for the students. And also, we allow organizations of all sizes to now white label our software to have their own custom built fundraising platform for the organization. Our current market strategy is increase our users through our platform and mobile app, <coughs> partnerships with high schools and post secondary schools, as well as very strategic partnerships with local businesses and nonprofits. We make money by leveraging five cents off of every dollar that comes to our platform, subscribing at a low monthly cost to organizations of all sizes, as well as add-ons more access on our platform and subscription. We have 20 plus years of experience in education, data analytics, entrepreneurship, business leadership, as well as an advisory team that amplifies our knowledge, experience, and scale and potential. Our traction includes strategic partnerships with organizations such as Detroit Pistons, over 500 users on our platform, $200,000 already sent to students across the country, and corporations already using our B2B white label software. So as we look at our traction and where we're going, I want to highlight this very important person in our organization. Eric has looked at five decades worth of data for the U.S. educational system. We talk about with a lot of entrepreneurs in here, what's your runway? I challenge you to look at the runway of the industry in which you are in. And that's what we did. When we looked at the numbers, he said, we need to take action now. This is what we found. Since 2013, we have been on a rapid decline in post-secondary institutions. We have seen so many close, merge, or just miraculously disappear overnight. So I want you guys to think about this as I leave you with this question. Over the past two years, we have seen inflation, 
increase, particularly for our 20 to 30 years old, in credit card debt, the cost of energy going to the roof, the cost of food, the cost of rent. So what happens in June when the student loan payments cut back on? We have to take action now, and this is why I like tuition is here to make that change, to make that impact, impact fill that gap. To learn more, please visit us today at www.lighttuition.com. Thank you. So great question. So that's actually for the institution. So high schools, post-secondary schools, colleges, trade schools, any of those organizations. And what we actually did, we pivoted. One of my advisors said, you're a lion, and you're going to invest the same amount of energy hunting a mouse as you was an antelope. So we found some antelope, which are organizations such as Kiwanis, Lions Club, Rotary, because you think about it. Just like a lot of these institutions, they don't have the budgets to have the technology in-house. So they're still operating on antiquated systems. When you mail out checks to get these donations, that gives that person time to think about, hmm, do I want to give, do I want to reduce it? Now they have the software to capture them in that moment, increase that transaction time, and reduce the friction. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, two questions. Uh, a really interesting product. Uh, so my first question is, what happens, uh, how do you know that the person, uh, so how are you connected to actual institution so that um, somebody says that it goes to University X, that actually this is a fact? So that's the first question. And second question is, what happens if a person needs quarter of a million, let's say, and it has 200,000? What happens with 200,000 and in the period until until the 250 is rise? So great question. So I'm going to the first one. So what we have with our system is called an enrollment verification form. So of course, the one thing we want to do is protect our students so we don't collect the social security number. They have to verify the school address your student account, and our team actually follows up with them. So we already have every school in the system, in the country, input into our system. So we call, we verify, and the checks we send is in care of the student, but it's written out to the university to make sure that student actually uses that tuition cost for it. And then when it comes to the raising of the funds, we're actually leveraging, well, we can't reduce uh, uh, bill right now, but institutions that help scale their funds for them. So I want to add this. A student as young as pre-K can start raising funds with us, with like tuition. And we help use that as a vehicle to close that gap when it comes to paying for tuition. So whether it's raising 50,000, 250,000, once they hit that goal, they can select when they're ready to disperse and we send them directly to the school. Okay. I have like a similar question that how do you verify the credential of the fee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and just to add on to that, Internally, we have a very strict and stringent process we go through. So before a check is ever dispersed and sent, it's reviewed by finance, reviewed by operations, and reviewed by IT to verify that the campaign owners who they are, the school is actually in business because a lot of schools have been closing, and to make sure the right amount is sent to the school. Now here's a caveat. If that student drops out before the campaign closes, we refund all that money back to the supporters because again, we like tuition. Our goal is to make sure that support reaches the tuition, if not, it goes back to those contributors. So I'm going to try and stop asking some questions, but um, so the, the fee that you pay, that the colleges pay, is that in addition to the 5% that you collect on the, the total number? No, so here's a unique thing. For those colleges and universities that's using our white label software, they just pay their monthly fee. Because our goal is, and I'm going to use the Qantas organization, is to give them the power to control the narrative. Think about this. For these large fundraising organizations, they're collecting interest. So one of our competitors had $300 million they raised off of campaigns in the year. And I'm pretty sure that interest did not go to those organizations that brought in that money. Now with these local organizations, they have control of that money. They collect the interest. They use it as a financial vehicle to now scale the organization, to make more money, and to make more impact. So going back to your question, no. If organization is subscribing on our label, it's completely up to them on how they do the fees, transactions, and things like that. Okay, but I don't get it. So, University of Michigan you pays you $100, and then all the students that participate in this program, you have no additional revenue from that? Correct. So they just do, that's our B2B model. So that's where they do a monthly recurring payment on it from a subscription base. Now with Light Tuition itself, we do have our B2C, which is our platform individually. So strategically, 
We're leveraging our students. If your university is investing in you, you should have every opportunity to graduate and pay your tuition without the burden of debt. So guess what? If U of M doesn't use our software, they can come straight to us. But if U of M does have their own platform, we encourage the students to leverage the institution in which you're at. Because guess what? Alumni are sometimes tired of building new buildings. They want to build new people. And that's what we leverage and get going with. All right. So if I understand you correctly, you're receiving the money and you're holding that your fund. So you have special fiduciary responsibility. So are you under regulation like a bank for that? Or, or what is it exactly? So actually right now, we're not, but we're leveraging one of our big partners. And again, I apologize, we can't announce it, but that was the gap we had. Because of course, as we start to see more money going through, you realize the responsibility was even bigger. So we now have a partner, which is our financial vehicle, to make sure those funds are taken care of, to have all the regulations, have the team in-house, but we have the software to make it happen. Okay, sorry about that. If you, have more, if you have more questions, you can obviously grab Mark afterwards. Yeah. And thank you for the questions. Always good for them. All right. So last week I was at this magical place, Austin, Texas. But I was there for South by Southwest. I'm original, you know, I was telling you guys I was from Austin. Anyway. I walk into this bitch competition and there is this person in this get up like I can't dress that cool. And I saw That's the pitch. Have you seen her pitch? I'm sorry. But it's trip slip. Come on up here. And I love the pitch. It was great to see you and I'm excited for you to present now. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. I'm the last pitch of the night, so we gotta do something different. We're gonna do a call and response. So if you've ever been to a concert and they're like, put your hands up, all that. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna start. The wheels on the bus go round and round. You guys are great, perfect. So everybody here probably has been on a field trip. Maybe not Tom, because I had to explain the concept of trip of uh, field trip. Because <laughs> he's from Poland, but they do have school buses over there and they do take the kids outside. So, Trip Slip is here to put field trips at your fingertips. So everybody here has been on a field trip. So whether you're a parent or a student, you've experienced having a piece of paper handed to you with the expectation of either I have to turn this into the teacher with more paper, which is money, and then the teacher having to do all the things that, are, that have to happen for a field trip to happen. So I want to make that smarter, and that's how we're putting field trips at your fingertips. So the problem is what I just described. You have the issue of a teacher who's already doing a million things, who has to find out or think about, where do I want to take these kids? How much is it going to cost? When can we go? Blah, 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 blah. Then you have to have these unreliable couriers bring home a piece of paper, which just ends up being litter somewhere, <laughs> take it home in a certain amount of time, bring it back with more paper, hopefully in enough time for the teacher to collect that paper, to turn it into the school, the, the, the school turns into more paper, i.e. a check, to send to the vendors. So you see the problems here. Teachers have lots of problems. Venues and vendors have lots of problems. We, we want to fix that. We can do that. There's an app for that, or there should be, and that's trip slip. So we want to do something that creates digital is greater than paper. We know this, but a wraparound solution for field trips, for teachers, for parents, for vendors, and providers. So whether you're a cultural institution, a transportation company, it's, it can be smarter. So a teacher can go on our app in less than five minutes and put in all the information that will create a trip slip. This trip slip will then generate a QR code and a shortened link that they can send out to teachers, or to parents, I'm sorry. Teachers will send this out to parents. Parents will fill out the form and send it back. They can say, hey, I want to be able to pay through trip slip. It's free to create a trip slip. It's free to fill out a trip slip. The only time we make money is when money is transpired. So if you're a parent like me, and oh, I need, you have to get $10 like today for a field trip that's gonna happen, cool. Stop at the gas station, get money out of the ATM, pay a convenience fee, pay my bank for using a foreign ATM, break the $20 bill so I gotta buy a honey bun first thing in the morning that I don't need. So now I just paid $9 to get $10. I'll, I'll get trip slip $2 for that. So that's where we're at with that. So here's how we make money. That's one portion of where we plan to take it, but that by itself is pretty huge. So when you talk about $2 per kid, there's like 
millions of kids in America. <laughs> like 55 million kids in America. But we're addressing just Southeast Michigan. So let's say Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, maybe Monroe, and Washtenaw. If we can get 750,000 trips, because the average student only takes three field trips per year. Teachers in the 216 discovery, customer discovery interviews that I conducted said, if it were easier, I would do more trips. But right now, they're only averaging three. So total available market, about 55 million kids. Teacher population, three million. We're only looking at Detroit for now. Eventually, it will be, we'll charge transportation companies for being on our platform. We'll charge a convenience fee to the vendors and the venues that people want to be able to visit. So competitors, I'm gonna slide through really fast like Crystal did because who cares about them, but I'll just address it. So P-Slip, Fox, and e those are our biggest competitors. They are um, built into systems that are being used by schools, but Trip Slip does not have to be built into anything. We address the teacher because the teacher has a problem. We don't want districts. We don't even want principals. We want to be able to solve this problem for teachers because they're the ones who said, I have this issue, fix it for me. So that's how we monetize. A freemium model that we make money when money is exchanged. So whether a parent is buying a souvenir package for their children, or I have a special needs child. My younger daughter has been diagnosed with autism and ADHD. She can't tell you that she's gluten-free and allergic to yellow dye number five. So we need to be able to order her food for her or I pack her lunch. There'll be a convenience fee for that. So scalability, the arbitrage model of, hey, here's how much money we have. Can you just book it for us? Yes. That's how we've made money. Last year we did about $17,000 in revenue and it was through the arbitrage model and the trip slips were just to be able to prove that people wanted it. So we're gonna leverage eventually advertising data, so we'll, we'll go ad revenue, so leveraging data and mailing lists, push notifications and Groupon style discounts and benefits. So use of funds, this is what we want to be able to do. We're raising about $500,000 and I say that a little bit with a little bit of trepidation just because things are changing because of this wonderful team so i have a cto now and that cto is allowing me to be able to bring those costs down because she is fully bought in and she's willing to take equity instead of a paycheck so i'm not paying people from fiverr and <laughs> people around detroit to help me to develop this thing so i have a, a, a fractional coo i have a cto that little girl in the bottom i printed her with my body that's my daughter <laughs> if you guys are interested in hearing more about TripSlip, you can reach out to me here, hey at trytripslip.com, and it is TripSlip. The web address is trytripslip, but that's me. I'm Asha Jones. Thank you guys so much for listening. Yes, sir. So students are very outnumbered, or students outnumber teachers, so we're going after teachers. So there's about three and a half million teachers. We don't have, we don't, we need the students because they're, they're not the end user, they're the product of the end user. The end user is really the parent, at least right now for our MVP. So we're going after teachers. So what we do right now is called a brunch and learn. We have about a hundred uh, teachers across about a dozen schools in Metro Detroit, so Wayne and uh, Macomb counties. And we go and do a brunch of ours. So we do a demo of the video, like a video show that shows how, hey, how, here's how you do trip slip, and put it on your phone, and this and that. And it's working really well. The problem is, I have a full-time job and have two children who need me to work so that they can have things they need. So that's why I'm raising it, so that I can do this full-time. The brunch and learns really allow people to have that engagement and to see what the product is, how it's useful to them, and I've never had anyone tell me no. Like just explaining the concept to them is always very effective, but the brunch and lunch, we have 100% compliance when people get to actually demo the product. Yes, sir. Yes, we have over 100 teachers um, across uh, more than a dozen schools that are using the beta version of the app now. We'll be in the apps, in both app stores by the mid to late April, um, and we anticipate there being more, but we're just trying to make sure that all the bugs are fixed. It's, it's, it's pretty, but it's ugly, and we're, we don't want to add any features until we know that it works flawlessly and without them having to call, because that's still work a job. Yes, ma'am. I have two questions. Yes. One is, now that we're looking at kids and their data being on your app, mm -hmm. do you have security around those? Have you considered things like that? Or 
Yes and yes. Okay. So there are lots of things that come along with compliance, but right now it's just children's names. It's nothing more than you would see on a piece of paper. It's much more secure okay. than it would be on the clipboard in the school bus. Okay. Second question, what's your ask? I mean, so my ask is relative, let's talk. Um, but right now, so we're, we're pre-seed raising about 500,000. And uh, that's a malleable number just because um, things are changing in real time. Just based on South by Southwest, um, the people that we met down there, um, and my CTO and I really getting into the nitty gritty about what it's gonna look like to build the company. Yep, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I, I was just gonna ask or mention quickly, try to target CTOs, and if you're doing brunches with teachers already, it would be neat as a mom in PTO to do something like, oh, we're hosting the food for a teacher, uh, the two teacher nights a, um, a year, where all the teachers have to be there to talk to the kids' parents and you are hosting that event and you can come. I love that idea. Thank you so much. Sponsored by Trip Slip. I love it. Sounds good. Great. Yes, ma'am. Can a teacher sign up on their own or do they have to get their school board on board? Okay, that's a great question because you saw our competitors. There are some competitors where they are already doing this within the systems that exist, but this is something that can be a la carte. So teachers can do it on their own or they can do it within a district. But this is like all schools care about is did you get the parents' permission and do you have my money? So if they have those two things, the principal doesn't care, the, 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 the district doesn't care. Yes? Kind of relatedly, um, if you're going to just do the teacher and not do the school district itself, what's your liability and risk? You're like getting like literally permission slips that say like, I permit my kid to do this thing. Um, if you're going directly to the teacher and maybe the school doesn't even know that they're using you guys as opposed to like maybe they're already built in for first platform, how do you manage that from like a risk and liability standpoint? So we're not really thinking about the risk and liability because right now only 8% of our competitors are having been penetrated. So like Detroit Public Schools is the largest school district in the state of Michigan. It's my home district is where I graduated from, it's where my children go to school. We approach them, of course, they're the largest. They have 70,000 some odd students. Um, I met with the director of marketing. They said, we want to see this at a school level. Let it go viral, so to speak, within the school and let's see that there's, uh, there's something. All that is really required is saying that a parent gave permission. The alternative is that people, teachers who aren't getting a piece of paper to consent where, with a parent signature, they're calling parents on the phone the morning of the trip. So which is better? Okay, we're done. Because she's not gonna hang me on this. <laughs> we good? Okay. Yes, I mean, okay. That was it? Yeah, so th th that's the only thing. Is as long as there's something, that's what the district cares about, is that the, we can prove that the, the parent gave permission versus right now the alternative is either a piece of paper or verbal con uh, consent. All right, um, those are some awesome pitches. Thank you everybody for doing the things that you do and being brave. It's, it's really a hard doing that and coming up here and actually like talking about training and taking the criticism. So round of applause again for them. <laughs> Any other important things I need to tell them besides the other things I'm going to tell them? <laughs> <laughs> well, in one month, we'll meet here again. I think it's April 18th. And we'll start again at 5.30 with a happy hour and then we'll kick off again at 6.30. We'll have some new pitches that basically you can definitely, wait, wait, there's some people I know that might be here that might be pitching at some point, so I know you're out there. But either way, some of you will be pitching. But yes, you'll ask them all, come back again. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and definitely have a drink on Ann Arbor Spark, a beverage, I just made a beverage. Um, announcements? Announcements. That's it. Oh, okay. Announcements. Speaking of announcements, this is one of the time when you need something from the ecosystem. You're looking for a job. You want to tell us about yourself. You got a cool business, or you know, come on up and tell us about it. Tell us what you need. No one wants to hear the rest of me. <laughs> so we're Not once. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> it's
It's so weird to see you in person. I know. It's very, <laughs> I haven't met her virtually for the entire semester that we Wait, come on over here. Okay. Right, right here. Well, not I'm right there. Yeah, yes. Hi, we're coming to call Data Space. We are a local data science, data analytics, data engineering recruiting firm. Uh, we focus on those specific areas. And if you're looking for a job in that area, I invite you to come to datastrace.com. If you're looking for some contract people, we've got the right people. Uh, ben Todd, the local guy here, uh, co-authored a couple books on data warehousing. He knows tech. And the way we're different is that we are focusing on the tech abilities of the people, not just a bunch of um, keywords on a resume. So, so we save you a lot of time when you're trying to um, interview the people. Too. Oh, and by the way, thank you. <laughs> great, great presentation. All of them were fantastic. Thank you. So hi, I'm Roger Rail. I've been videoing this event for 10 years or 12 years or how long is <laughs> <laughs> um, And I'm not going to be here next month. Where are you going? Uh, well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be in the state. And um, I don't have anybody to video this. Now, one of the things that sets A2 New Tech apart is that it was it was run by entrepreneurs themselves. So we have we have Spark and other organizations that do the top down, but we have A2 New Tech that's kind of the bottom up, run by the entrepreneurs themselves. And as a former entrepreneur, when I entered my extended transition, which is what I call retirement, I started helping with all the different networking groups and especially the entrepreneur groups, A2 New Tech. D New Tech and even inspired TC New Tech. Um, and it's important to get ideas and people together and share ideas. Not everybody can be at each event. So it's important to record them so we can go back. And also for the history. You know, we have enough, we have hundreds of companies that are presented here. What are those people doing? You know, they went on, and, and, and sometimes people have presented five times here. You know, those competitions between the company. You know, who's done the most startups? But uh, this is an ecosystem we need to keep going, and capturing all of the events is important. So see me afterward if you want to help with the, with the recording. All right, I'm going to take this moment, but we've got to, like, keep Honestly, when I sat down with Doug when we were having this moment, he was like, you, you really should show some love to Roger. So, giving you some love. Everybody's giving you some love. Thank you, Roger, for all the things you've been doing. <laughs> and if you ever want to come back, you're welcome during your transition. I'm going to miss you. All right. Next. I met you two just like recently. <laughs> Uh, I think we've been known each other a lot. Uh, I've been coming to this event for like seven or eight years, uh, on and off, and I would have to say this is maybe the best batch of uh, the best batch of uh, four total pitches, all excellent, that I've seen in years of coming here. So congratulations to all of you <laughs> for the uh, for the audience here. People enjoy listening to this kind of pitches. Um, we have a similar event coming up in a few weeks, be held right at Spark, it's the New Enterprise Forum. Uh, we're a volunteer group that works in the community, helping startups uh, with what help from Spark also. And uh, I would encourage you to check out our website, newenterpriseforum.org, uh, where you can sign up to attend, I believe it's April 20th, it's always the third Thursday of the month. And at about five o'clock we get started and uh, We'll be doing some, uh, you'll hear some uh, great pitches then as well, and get to network with a lot of people who support the uh, startup community. Uh, and uh, we also have some free groups. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the founders, a lot of the clients that I supported through Ann Arbor Spark have gone through NEF, um, and they have gotten a tremendous amount of support. Mentorship, but it really is a tribe. It takes a tribe to really 
like children, grow entrepreneurs and get them to where they go. And they've done really great work. They've supported a lot of Ann Arbor Spark Art Entrepreneurship Boot Camps to really help me. Those pitches kind of refine. So if you need that type of support, please, they're there. Reach out. Um, they, Paul used to have it, and he passed the baton over to David Mass. But if you're reading those connections, please holler out, and we can get you connected to that organization. All right, who's next? Me. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Um, Michael Hill here with Tech Elevator. Oh, this way. Right. The backlight. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael here with Tech Elevator. So Tech Elevator is a coding boot camp, intensive boot camp. We have a full-time boot camp for 14 weeks and a 30-week boot camp as well. We produce amazing talent, software developers who are looking to get into the field. We almost have 3,000 students placed over the country. We used to have a physical campus in Detroit, and they hired me to put another physical campus back in Detroit after COVID. So if you are looking for some talent and some people that can get your business to the next level, please come see me. I have two of my students in the building right now, Matthew, and we also have Johnny. So please come see me, say what's up, and find out more about what we do. Cool? Landscapes Gallery Exhibition. Uh, if anyone has contacts to Ann Arbor Hands On Museum or any museums uh, locally or that you might suggest, um, I have about seven of them that are planned for this year. Uh, a few of them, uh, the dates are set. So if you have any suggestions uh, or connections, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close it out unless there's Anybody else? You're, okay, we're good. All right, uh, I get to be done for the night. Thank you so much for being here. It is wonderful to see your faces. Hopefully we'll see you next month. We'll have some, some new pitches, presentations, and yeah, we'll have some networking and all that. Have well, a good two, night. Two things. Yep, two things. okay. First, um, how, do, how do people sign up if they want to sort of recommend someone to pitch? Do we have that yet? I know we talked about this, but I'm not. You don't have a recommendation. You have to wait for people to sign up. Well, you can go on the website, you know, and there should be a Google form. You'll fill out your information, and we'll get back to you, right? Anything? Yeah. We'll do a better job next week. We'll put our, our contact information up here so you can talk to us directly. Um, we will have a Google form that you can just fill out if you want to either pitch yourself or if you have a recommendation uh, to pitch. Uh, we'd love for the community, as Roger said, to come to us as opposed to us to go to them. Um, so we love that. And then I always go to the TC New Tech, which I've recommended to Chris and a couple of other people go. And afterwards they always say, like, all right, we're going over to this brewery to eat food and drink beer and the whole thing. Well, we don't have to say we're going over to a brewery because it's right here. So uh, if you haven't had your drink and eat, Phil, come on over and join us. We're going to be hanging out at a venue afterwards and uh, having dinner. So we'd love for anybody else to join us. Yep. Well, thank you for